Sandra. Carrie. Who did we just interview? I, I'm like close to tears, honestly. Are you? Well, I mean, you know, I've talked to her for over the years for so long. So it's like talking to an old friend, but I, you know what I mean? Like for her to do this for me and for us is, was so immense and so huge. And I know, I mean, like, cause she loves me, you know? So like, who do we talk to? You, you. Operatic royalty. I will call her operatic royalty, Marilyn Horn. Marilyn. Oh. Like we need, we need a moment to just absorb. We literally just hung up the phone with Marilyn and that was just a lot of beautiful memories. Yeah. Um, a lot of information for young singers. Word that uh, is so pr relevant and so important to hear from her. I'm just so glad that she wanted to talk with us and um, talk about all kinds of stuff. Cause you know, Marilyn says it like it is. She always has something I have loved about her for over 20 years. Um, yep. It was just some shenanigans. Some a little bit of shenanigans. A little bit of shenanigans. Be screaming Beavis without shenanigans. So yeah, watch the clip. And I'm going back to, shall we? This is so poopy. No, you do it, do it. I'll do it, I'll do it gingerly. Please subscribe. Subscribe. It's from our house to your house. Please subscribe. Thank you. Thank you. Doodly, doodly. So what advice would you give to young singers? What's the biggest thing that you would say to all those kids out there wanting that are standing? I'm going to say what I've said for 70 years. <laughs> Learn how to sing. Learn how to sing. You can't, you can't, the technique is still the basis. Yeah. And then, then you can do what you want to, if you want a belt or whatever, but learn how to do it right first. Hello. Hello. This should be good. Marilyn, hello. It's Sandra. My God, how are you? I, you know what? I am all the better for hearing your amazing, lovely voice. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is so exciting. I know. You have no idea. It has been so long since I have talked to you. It's, you know, I haven't talked to too many people as it is. I'm delighted to talk to both of you. You both mean very much to me. Aww. Oh, you mean the world to me. I have to tell everybody that's going to listen to this that you and I met, gosh, probably over 20 years ago when you came to do a master class at Florida State University. I think it's more than 20 years, dear. Well, why, why would we admit that to everybody? <laughs> I remember the day that I met you in person, I was d doing the National Council auditions. You remember that? And oh, Karen sure, Ash I remember that. Absolutely. You know, that was 25 years ago, Marilyn. Oh, God. <laughs> I know. I know. I, and we still look the same. And Oh, yeah? <laughs> mm, except, except Carrie and I are now blonde. <laughs> Only change. Well, I'm not white, so. <laughs> well, you know what? It looks good on, on, I think, on a lot of people. It looks distinctive, right? My, well, mine is completely white. It, it's not, it not mixed at all. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. I, but I remember when your hair did that, and I thought it was gorgeous. I think you thought I was crazy, but I loved it. I love that color. It's beautiful. Well, I did it overnight, you know, because my hairdresser said, we're not going to wait for all this to grow in and out. She said, I'm going to make you a platinum bond right now, and then it'll just grow in. And that's exactly what happened. It's what my hairdresser wants to do. And I said, you know what? I'm only 51 years old. I'm not ready for that step yet. I didn't do it till I was 75. So okay. that'll give you a goal. Okay. I will wait until 75. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? We want, yeah. to, we want to have a catch up with Marilyn Horn session. So we just wanted to know how you're doing. And where, and where are you? I live in Santa Barbara. Okay. And I'm very happy to be here. We're having a beautiful sunny day. Oh. And um, it's this time of year. Sometimes we get our best weather. 
And mm -hmm. uh, I live with a tremendous panoramic view of the ocean, the city, the islands, everything. So I'm, I'm very happy here that I, I've stayed here and I have 24 seven care now, caregivers. Yeah. And uh, costs a fortune. But as Matthew Epstein said to me, that's why you worked so hard all those years. Smart man. Yeah. Smart man. You know, I think that you, you like those panoramic views because I remember your gorgeous view from your New York City apartment of Central you know, Park. I'm a view person. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I, I, walked in, I walked into this house uh, in 1998 and I saw the view and I said, I'll take it. I didn't say how much is it or anything. <laughs> so how are you doing? We know where you are, but how, how are things I, doing? I, I've got a lot of physical challenges. I'm not, nothing more than um, my skeleton. I have a lot of arthritis mm. because my, my, my um, what do you want to say? I want to say my joints mm. have worn out. <laughs> and so I keep it. In under wraps with CBD, you know what that is? Oh, yeah. oh. My mom calls it Mary Jane. <laughs> Short for <Whatever>. marijuana. <laughs> right. Well, CBD, marijuana, I like it better than the one, the hemp. The hemp one I don't think is as good. Right. But anyway, I've been taking it for years. Anyway, I'm not, do I'm not doing a damn thing. <laughs> because we're locked in again in California. Right. Wow. California's in, it's shut down, shattering home, home shattering, yeah. Yeah, and have you seen the news? There's a major storm hitting New York. Yes. I know. I wish, I wish we were there. I love snow. Sorry. I live in Canada, so I love snow. Where are you? You're in Canada now? Yeah, I'm about an hour outside of um, Toronto. It's a yeah, it's about as far away as Santa Barbara is from, like, Sherman Oaks. Yeah, it's beautiful. In the woods. You know, I know Canada really well because I sang a lot in Canada. I, mm -hmm. Because I did so many recitals. Yes. Yeah. I really know the country really, really well. Like, Canada is, is the same country. Yeah. This country is this country's crazy. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truth. How has how has oh. COVID affected you and and being around? Because I know your daughter and your grandbabies are out there. So well, actually, grand adults now, which kills yeah. me. We feel very well. Old. They are Daisy. Daisy is um, a senior at UCSB. Love it. And um, she's graduating this year. And um, of course, hating it because it's all online. Yeah. And, sure. and she has also has a job. She works at a store called Anthropology, yes. and, and, and um, so she's busy right now with finals and working, has hardly a, a minute to herself, but she's fine. And the boys are, um, well, Henry's going to be 18 on the day after me, Amazing. and, uh, and he, Alex is 16, um, in the you know, junior and senior years in high school, again, online, hating it. For yeah. sure. So how often are you able to see them with all of the COVID restrictions and stuff? Well, we they come with masks and okay. we usually sit out on my deck, which by the way, I just am having painted right this minute. Oh and <laughs> it, it, they did you know, they I have to do it being on the ocean. I'm yeah. I'm high up, but you know, that ocean air is murder on yeah. anything. For yeah. sure. So, are you close to the okay. music? Are you close to the music academy mm -hmm. of the West? Oh yeah, like seven minutes. Mm -hmm. You need to visit it now because you can see Marilyn Horn Building, my dear. Ooh! <laughs> now you don't know something about about. I know Carrie went to the music academy of the West, but I, I studied with privately with Marcia yes, Singer. And I would go, go come up there for voice lessons. And Marisa Bravanel was a very good friend of mine until he passed oh, away. Oh, he was a wonderful old guy. Oh, yes. he? I knew him very well. well. I would love to come. Maybe Carrie and I were talking about doing a Screaming Divas tour. <laughs> a singing what? Divas? A Screaming Divas tour. Because oh, our God, show is called guys. Screaming Divas. You know, I, I really hate all this 
streaming and shmeming and all of that. It's just, it, it is so, what can I say, so much against what we all worked so hard for. Yes. To learn how to really sing. Yes. And, Anti-social, and it, yes. It it bothers me, but uh, I'm, I'm, I go with the flow. Yeah. And, um, <laughs> Yeah, I have, I have a lot to say about what I think is going on now as far as uh, even even the online stuff with um, opera is really changing fast, you guys. Yes, really super fast. Yeah. So, so on my question, yeah. are you, I mean, I know that you're still a part of the Music Academy. If they're able to do something this summer, are you going to do any of the live, you know, the online teaching and things like that? I, you know, I was supposed to teach this year. Okay. And but I was scheduled for the last two weeks, which Uh-oh. was week seven and eight, and they only did four weeks. So it was all canceled. Oh my gosh, that's heartbreaking. It's all right. It, 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 it's fine. Um I love the music academy very much. Mm. And um what can I say? It, you know, the last part of my life was spent there. I yeah. Well, and I'm grateful and, and that you, you did that. I'm grateful. So many of us are. As soon as, as soon as I, you know, we can get back going, I, I'm not sure I'll be teaching. I'm going to be 87 next year. So let's, you know, the biggest, it. the biggest challenge is walking yeah. and, um, you know, all of that. So I have to see how, how I'll do, but I've still got my brains, which is I, still good. About, yeah. <laughs> Talk to us about Zoom and how you feel about all of all of this online singing and teaching and opera in general. Well, I, the online stuff and all of that is it's here to stay for now because there's no choice. Right. right. There, you know, nobody's singing live. I guess they're doing some live performances in um, Europe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In fact, I do. You, do you either either of you know Lester Lynch? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I called Lester's a very close friend. Ah. And I called him the other night. He stays up late, usually like I do, but I don't stay up as late as I used to. But oh. anyway, I called him and I said, you know, where are you? Because I thought he was still in San Francisco. He said, I'm in Poland. <gasps> I said, what? <laughs> oh my God. He had just sung a concert in Poland. Good for him. <gasps> You, Good do you know Larry him. Foster? Have either of you sung with, with Larry Foster? No. No. Larry's a wonderful conductor that I've, I've known him since he was 18. Wow. And uh, he used to come and visit. And he and Henry were buddies and would sit. Uh-huh. He would, you know, bring a record by somebody like Fort Fangler and they'd sit and they'd listen to it and they'd discuss it and all of that. But anyway... That's awesome. Uh, he's been very ill, very oh. ill with with the COVID. Oh. And he, and, but he, anyway, this orchestra in Poland is a new orchestra of his. Oh, cool. Okay. And, and so, but Larry, I I don't know who the the assistant is, but Lester sang with the assistant. Larry's still in the hospital in Marseille. And doesn't answer his phone, so I have no connection with him. But at least Lester was there, where they had some information that he can't walk, and um, he he nearly died. He came very close to dying. This virus and, is horrible. You know, this this horrible thing is just way out of control in this country, yeah. and it every day it's just you know you hear. It, 3,000 deaths, and you think, this is not possible. I know. This, this, it's, you, you, it's unthinkable. Did you ever think in your lifetime that you would have to deal with this, Marilyn? Never. Yeah. No, well, who, who, who knew about this kind of a virus? Right. I mean, a lot of people knew about it, but I didn't. <laughs> no. But, I mean, you know, it almost sounds when you're talking to some of the experts, they, it almost, or listening to them, I mean, I, it almost sounds like they knew something like this would come. Well, I think the Obama administration did, at least they planned for it, didn't they? I mean, and then when Trump came into office, he took that whole department out. 
and then here we are. You know what I mean? So right. I, I think you're right. I think that they, at least the previous. Well, I just, I, I just referred to him as the asshole. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I love you. And yes, we, we, we love you. <laughs> oh my gosh, well, the when asshole. I want to be clean, I call him the pig. Oh. <laughs> Oh, Marilyn, you know what? I love you. Guess what? I know him. You do? Oh, I'm sure you do. Oh, my gosh. Do we need to hear this story? Yes, Is it a good do. story? All those years in New York. I mean, please. He has kissed me, my dear, on the cheek. <gasps> Ew. Oh, gross. <laughs> he likes my singing. No. Well, I mean, who doesn't? Come on. <laughs> exactly. Anyway, um, it's going to take us a long time. I think to get sort of back on our feet so that we're on our feet, not just, you know, on our heels. Yeah, yeah. for sure. I mean, especially for our business too. I think, I think it's going to be longer than what everybody said or thought. But That's also our like. business, like so many others, but ours is the arts. So people don't have as much patience right. to give to the arts as they do to other things. Right. Yeah. You know, you know, Matt, you both know that Matthew Epstein's a really close friend of mine. Right. Yes. And we've known that we've known each other about fifty-five years. Yeah. And <clears throat> he's very hot on getting a secretary of the arts. And I said, oh. Matthew, <laughs> you know, fifty, sixty years ago, <laughs> I started to try to do that myself, and I mm -hmm. remember exactly. I got very upset because I read that we had this new tank that was costing um, about a million dollars, a tank, right? Yeah. One bazooka, one bazooka takes out a tank. Wow. And so I remember we had a senator named Proxmire, mm -hmm. and, and he, he was in the news, so I wrote him. And I said, they, oh, well, excuse me, and also at the same time, there was an article I said that they were cutting back the NAA. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And because there were always Republicans who wanted to cut the NEA, and mm -hmm. they started out about with about I don't know four or five hundred million, and by now it was only like a hundred and sixty. And so I wrote him in a letter, and I and I said, please, couldn't we just have one tank? I mean, <laughs> you know, we'll, we'll take good care of it too. <laughs> we just and, need one tank. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh. And, I, and couldn't we someday have a secretary of the arts? That was 50 some years ago. Yeah. It hasn't changed, has it? No. It's sad. You know, I, the arts. Poor, poor, poor Biden's got so much to do. You know, you always think that the arts come last. It's oh, true. Yeah. We'll see. But, but that's the one area for me where Obama failed. Okay. He, ne he never paid one bit of attention to the classical arts, as far as I know. Right. And he is such an educated man, and I admire him so much. I think mm -hmm. he's fantastic. Uh, but th I think they just don't know that music. I don't know. No. But people in this well, time, don't they, don't they turn to the arts for comfort and and to make themselves feel better, they, they turn to music. So why are people not supporting the arts more? I don't understand. You know, I just watched a movie last night on Netflix. It's just come out called The Prom. Okay. Okay. With a, with a lot of important people in it, like Meryl Streep. Oh, love her. And uh, um, I hated it. Oh. It, was, it was nothing but people dancing around trying so hard to be good uh, and nobody could sing anything except belt. Oh. And this, I'm, I'm too old to be kind anymore <laughs> about things like that because I can't stand constant belting. Nor can I. Thank you. And, and it so goes against my grain because of working so hard to control my instrument. Mm -hmm. And yes. like, I know both of you have too. But sure. we're, we're dying species. This is it. I well, don't talk think to it's going to happen. I know. I think it's gonna talk to us about that. Why don't, why don't singers nowadays 
why don't they understand the voix mix and why don't they understand how to go from chest into head? Well, let's figure out that they got to have teachers who can teach it. Yeah. That's one thing. Yeah. And the other thing is, is that that's not going to be required of opera singers anymore because of the operas that they're writing. And we're having, we're having lots of new operas, at, at least in, before the pandemic started. And they're all, everybody has to sing them. And you can't sing them unless you sing forte all the time because the orchestration is so loud. Yeah. So loud. You know, I, so you talk, don't bother to learn to sing pianissimo or anything like that. No, That's I know. We heard. Why? You know, in all these years of singing for myself, you taught me early on about the chest voice and mixing it, the bottom, the middle, going up to the top. And in all these years, it's been so interesting because I've had people ask me, well, how do you do that? How do you go down in there? But you still have your top because so many times the singers go push down or they think they're singing chess and then slowly but surely they lose their top notes. And anytime that I explain what you explain to me, uh, it's like people go, but that's not, I mean, that's not normally, that's not the way that's taught in schools or in universities and but it should be. I feel like there should be some video of you telling people that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, there are a lot of master classes of mine that, that have yes. been filmed and everything, but I, I don't have a lot of major ones out there. Many more singers have, have master classes on uh, what, YouTube or something. Right. Like that. <clears throat> but they're out there. If, they're if, out there. You know, you search them, but I never did a movie about singing. I was asked to, and I thought, oh, that's too hard. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. I think Carrie and I need to have a road trip out to California when it opens up, and we're going <laughs> to film you talking about chess voice and voix mix. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Well, well yeah. voix, voix mix, you got you got to get your mindset a little bit of, in, in a tenor vein think if you were imitating a tenor mm -hmm. oh the really good ones say like Geda, who knew yeah. how to mix it yeah yep well and i also one of the other thing that i maintain is if you keep your head voice healthy mm -hmm. you'll keep your voice always so did you carry when you were singing did you carry down your head voice as far as it could go no, not really. I started to mix. Okay. Okay. But, but you, I, cer I certainly, but I could sing low in a, I, I would never call it head voice because I know the head voice ends at around E natural, let's say. Um, but I could sing lightly down there. And so some kind of head mixture was getting in there. Okay. You helped me with the triangle vision because a lot of people said, you know, it's a regular triangle. So the top of the triangle is kind of at your throat and, the, and your chest opens up like the bottom of a pyramid. And you said, no, honey, it's the other way. <laughs> it's you flip it upside down in the triangle. It's an, up, it's an up, upside down pyramid. Yeah. And for some reason that resonated with me so well that I thought, oh, okay. And that's how... It, and that's how, for me, it was easy to keep the register even from the top to the bottom with that, to go as low and to really have some power and sound down on the bottom and still be able to fly up to the top without, without damaging anything or without making it sound incorrect, I guess. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is, is that I don't know who the teachers are that still want a forward placement. <laughs> Yeah. Few and far between. Few and far between. You know, can I just say this for I don't anybody that hasn't been fortunate enough like myself to know you, that it was the best thing in the world to have somebody in your career that told you the truth. Yeah. That would come to hear you sing and say, Listen, honey, you need to stop singing out of your ass or whatever it was, because I I'll never forget the comment. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like me. Yes, it does. And uh, <laughs> and you told, I mean, that I knew that whenever I walked into your apartment for coaching or lesson or whatever, that you were going to tell me the truth. And I, it was so important to me. And I feel like 
there are singers out there that need to hear this and need to know that they need to find those people whose ears they trust and that can have someone. Let me ask you, did you feel hurt or threatened when I did? No, never. I was so grateful that somebody actually told me that, that said, Hey, listen, you need to fix this, 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 and this, but this was also really great. And you were wonderful here, here, and here. I never felt like you came at me in a negative way or a berating way or that you were trying to tear me. Honest. You were just told me the same to me when we had dinner in New York. And I remember you said to me, listen, Sandra, you're not singing in tune. And coming from someone like you, you take that advice and you run with it, you know? Well, I, I don't I actually know who out there is still teaching the basis of bel canto. Come on, that's what we're talking right. about. Right, exactly. exactly. I think that's the whole problem now. We don't, we don't have bel canto orchestras underneath the singers anymore. That's the problem. Um, can they, we get they have to sing sing against a lot of brass yeah and that makes uh, I, martin katz and i marty you know is my old friend and yeah. and accompanist and marty said to me two years ago jackie singers can't sing soft anymore nope and he was absolutely right i hadn't experienced that yet because in my teaching i was still teaching it and he but that's what's going on now or if they do, it's not done correctly. It's almost not supported. It's no. not supported. Yeah, it's like almost on the false folds that really, in a, if you keep doing that for a long time, you're getting in a lot I'm of... I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said. Oh, I said, I said a lot of times the, the way they're taught or how they're singing softly or pianissimi is not correct. It's like what Sandra said, it's not supported or it's really, it's just, yeah, it's, it's wrong. Well, support for support, come on, that's still the ABCs. Hello. Marilyn, let me tell you, master classes that I give, I have young artists come to me and say, number one, can you teach me how to sing high and soft? And I have five minutes. And number <laughs> and number two, they all they, you know, they all want it right now. And number two is they do not understand support. I think everything you just said is really accurate. Yeah. Really and, that's I, you know, I've I've done a bit of teaching here privately, but not since we have had lockdown, which was last March. <laughs> <laughs> and but I just a few people will come to me who want to work that hard. Right. Yeah. I know. And it is, and it's work. It's hard work. I'm 51. I'm still working on my voice. I know. Well, and, and believe me, you will do that until you stop or even after. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad so you, you said also, that. Your, your, body, your body shifts a little bit, you know. Right. You get, you get older and things change. And so, therefore, things can feel differently. And remember, yeah. singing is a series of sensations. Yes. Love that. You, you got to feel it all. So what advice would you give to young singers? What's the biggest thing that you would say to all those kids out there wanting, that are standing? I'm going to say what I've said for 70 years. <laughs> Learn how to sing. Learn how to sing. You can't, you can't, the technique is still the basis. Yeah. And then, then you can do what you want to, if you want a belt or whatever, but learn how to do it right first. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. I mean, that is that. Look, is, there, look, both of you are still singing standard rep. Yes. yes. Right. Yes. Yes. You both sing Verdi. You you know, and you both sing Puccini and things like that. Yes. And I don't know how much Mozart you're doing, but anyway, it's still standard rep. So therefore, you have to be able to sing. Yep. Yes. Oh my gosh. No, and we have to know how to sing with those conductors you're talking about and actually still stay healthy with and big orchestras. Mm-hmm. And the big sound and all of that. It's a it's a hot mess. That, that's a big that's a big problem. It's yes. a huge problem. Especially when you want to sing things like butterfly or with Sandra when she talks about singing Aida, and you're just like, I there's 
there are moments for this huge sound. And then there's moments of, we need a break. We need to stop putting our foot on the gas, or I'm not going to have a voice in three years or five years. Like you need to take care of us in that way. And it's really hard to find one that does. I believe that. And, and, and so the question is, I'm sure is where's one coming from? Mm -hmm. We got anybody, anybody coming from, from any knowledge of, of all of that? Million dollar. You know what, Marilyn, it is my mission. I'm 51 now. I'm still singing. I'm going to put this out there right now. It is my mission to, yeah, Carrie's like, yep. It is my mission to teach young singers because I, I was so fortunate to learn from people like you, from great singers, Regine Crespin, Renata Scotto, Morella Franey, being in the Young Artist Program. And, and I really gleaned a lot of information. And I think technique is a dying thing and it is my mission in life to teach that now if i don't sing another note in my life i will be happy because i really want opera to continue and i want to teach you're you're gonna have to fight i know because i think it's a real uphill battle right now because the the values Mm -hmm. that people are looking for now has much more swung to the dramatic side of opera not the singing side no the production the acting all of that i mean please the stage directors they're they're some of the worst monsters they (laughs) tell you to sing into the wings you know things like that Mm-hmm. when did they get all the power when did stage directors get the power take when did they take it away from conductors you know, I would say it started to happen at, in certainly in, in the late 50s. Yeah, it started. I'm not yeah. saying it happened, but it started. But there are certain conductors who still have the power if, if you can get them. But, you know, they're all they're dying. <laughs> they're, they're I know. Old. I know singers, too. I, I talk about Carrie and I, we talk about singing soft all the time because we did Anna Bolena here in Toronto a couple of years ago, and Not it was fun, un- you girls. That is one of the hardest operas in the world to sing. No, no. Joke. And and Marilyn, you know, I sang both. I sang Anna and Jane. And Jane, I'm sorry, is way harder than it's Anna. harder. Why oh, she's harder? I agree. That's the one I sang. Oh, yes. <laughs> And, she's and Carrie and I had competitions every night to see who could sing higher and softer. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what? It's people like Carrie that really drive me forward and want me to be and make me be a better singer. But there's so few of them now because they're all singers that are singing a fox or two fox too heavy. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Well, that's the other thing. Come on. Now we'll go, go back up, way back up. When people would interview me, say in the late sixties, yeah, early sixties, I said then microphones are coming. They 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 came for for Broadway. They ruined Broadway. Yep. You know they're, they're coming. And they're please, after this pandemic with people online all the time yep. and nothing but microphones, come yeah. on, come on. It, it, Absolutely. I'm spying. I'm, I'm just, I have a, a, a horrible face, like, please, because I made a promise to Carrie and my husband that I would not sing online during the pandemic. And Marilyn, 10 months later, I still have not sung online. The voice has to be heard live. Well, I, I, I'm not somebody to seek, there's a lot to listen to online. But first yeah. of all, I can't stand sitting in front of my computer that long. But I, know. I can't stand the, the, the sound is not there. No, no, not the no. real sound. Yeah, I have always wanted. This is a, a crazy question. I've always kind of wanted to know this because in your early part of your career, before opera became a part of it, you could sing so many different kinds of music, different genres, and you were involved with TV and all that kind of stuff. And looking back, are you glad you went into classical music or would the other road have been more fun or whatever? 
I'm very glad I went into classical music without a doubt because of the music. Yeah. Yes. Come on. For sure. All that good, great music I got to sing. You yeah. did. That yeah. that's really was one of the driving factors for me. Yeah. Was that. Okay. I saw you live three times. One was Tancredi. One was a concert you did with Joan Sutherland. And then when you did The Ghost of Versailles at the Met. And well, well, I think Ghost of Versailles is going to be my legacy because that's the one that's out there now. <laughs> oh, it was so hilarious. Your role was so perfect for you. I mean, it was written for you, John Corleano. But that time, you know, I, when, when I first, uh, you know, was when I first had learned it and I started to rehearse with Jim Levine, I said, Jim, I don't know what I'm doing with this role. Tell me something. Please tell me. <laughs> and Anything. he said, all out. All, pull out all the stops. Just do it all out. And he was right. But he said that to you. I mean, and that's a big thing because if I, yes, when you pull out all the stops, like everybody better move out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> it was spectacular. And I was a young artist at the Met. And I remember listening to that and saying in my brain, we are never going to hear singing like that again at the Met. And you know what? Mm. It's true. Mm. It, you really are. You're a different generation, you know? What your well, voice that's your... for sure. I'm almost ninety, dear. Well, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... <laughs> but but that Tom Crady, I think it was at LA Opera. Did you does that is that yeah, right? I did it in, in LA. I did. Yeah. And I was a I was a student at USC and I remember going to that and weeping because I said to myself, I will never hear this opera sung better. Like that. And huh? it was pivotal moment in my life because I thought that was the, the cement that maybe said I need to do this because I heard and watched what you did with that role and I said I want to do that and I want to be like that so well, thank you wow I'm I'm yeah. very moved thank you very much well you know what and I hope that Carrie and I are doing the same thing with our voices now to the younger generation well, you, know? you have to be, because I have you still in my mind, how you sing, both of you. Yeah. Well, mm. so we want to know, okay. Oh, oh yeah, wait, are you going to ask her? I, I know, I am going to ask you, Marilyn, because I knew both Caballé and Joan Sutherland. And who did you sing with more? I... I may have ended up singing more with, with Montserrat because we did a lot of Semiramide in uh, Europe. Okay. Um, and we did also some joint concerts in this country. Okay. And that, you know, I would say we maybe did like five in a row somewhere, something like that, we, including New York, San Francisco, mm -hmm. uh, I, I want to say Chicago, but I'm not sure. But anyway, it was the, the, the big cities. So we ended up doing a lot together. But by then, June was phasing out anyway. Okay. We're, we're I'm in touch with, with Ricky, her, her, yeah. her husband. Yeah. yeah he's, he just turned 90. Wow. Oh, my God. Uh, so would you say you were better friends with Caballé or with Joan? I was pretty close to both of them, to tell you the truth. Um, but there was something about my relationship with Joan that, in a way, went deeper. Mm -hmm. And I remember we were both, well, I had just gotten over cancer. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. she was had a lot of illnesses near the end, too. And I, right. we would one of us would call each other, you know, and, and um, there was some kind of feeling that, that we cared a little bit more about each other. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, and, sure. And I, I actually, when, when I knew she was dying, I actually stayed up all night. 
because mm. I knew I was going to get the information that she was gone. Right. And 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 at one point, I, I was in New York, so I don't remember. It was like I don't know four o'clock in the morning or something. Mm. And I called, and Ricky said, "You've heard." I said, "No." He said, "She just died." So you had a and connection it, with her. Yeah, we did. We had some kind of a connection from the time we met each other. Yeah. You know, I mean, she was already the toast of the world. Mm. And I was hired to sing with her. And, you know, I was you know, just finishing up in Gelsenkirchen <laughs> and, <laughs> and came home to get married, you know, and right. did an audition and, and they hired me. And um, when I, you know, met her, I was just, so thrilled and out of this world getting to know her because she was already big in Europe. Yeah. And what so I heard like, her on the radio a lot. And what was it like standing next to that voice? Well, you didn't hear it. It was going elsewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, a lot of people tell me that. They say if you hear the person when you're standing next to them, then the voice is going the wrong way. Right. That's right. Yeah. Wow. Okay. I, I remember, and I, 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 this is something that I always remembered because of that kind of thing. I was singing, I believe it was mm, the Bach B minor mass, I think. And I was singing the soprano at the time. It was, I was about 20, 21, something like that. And I, was standing next to this alto who was sounding huge, right? Right. And the con the conductor was Roger Wagner. Kept saying to me, Jackie, you've got to sing louder because you know she's covering you. She's covering. I said, okay. I kept saying. Finally, they came up and they said, Jackie, you've got to shut up. You're covering her <laughs> totally. <laughs> oh my God! So I've never been told that. Never, no. What, yeah. One of the first experiences I had about that. <laughs> That's hilarious. Okay, so I have a silly question for you, Marilyn, and you don't have to answer this, but you see all these promo photos of Caballé and Sutherland back from the 50s and 60s, and they had this huge hair. Was that, did they really have that much hair? No, no, okay. no, no. In fact, Joan and I went to the same hairdresser. <laughs> we piled anything on our armor hair that we could get on. <laughs> That's what I thought. But you see these photos and you think, hmm. I've got some pictures of myself with an awful lot of hair on me, too. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, my gosh. I love that. So but much. that was a style then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. That big bouffant. Everybody, big... Was, everybody was wearing switches and, and, you know, all kinds of additions. Yeah. It didn't last very long. Well, I mean, that's a lot of work. Yeah, people are doing well, it. Well, you had you had to have a hairdresser. <laughs> oh, yeah, for sure to do that. Yeah. Oh. But okay. Montserrat, I can tell you, Montserrat wore a wig always. Yes. Okay. Okay, can we get a little juicy? Because I would like to know, like Sandra and I have our, our worst colleagues that we've worked with, but you know, since we're still singing on stage, I feel like we can't really totally out people yet until we're 87 too. So, <laughs> and then we're totally going to spill the beans on everybody. I'm just letting everyone know right now. Oh, um, my book is coming. Yes. My book is coming. It's coming. So, um, were, were there any people that you just worked with and said, I never want to work with that person again? Um, I'm sure there were. I, I just can't recall. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Did you ever get the kiss Pavarotti? <laughs> oh, Luciano was wonderful to work with, basically. Um, I, I know that he, you know, could act up and demand things. And I remember that he and Scotto had a lot of trouble with each other because Scotto was super prepared oh. and super wonderful, and he was the opposite. Okay, <laughs> he was super. He was super wonderful. <laughs> that that's for sure. Yes. In fact, he was the tenor, right? I can't hear his voice now. Uh, 
suddenly that it doesn't affect me. Really? Oh God, it was gorgeous. It was mm. beautiful, right? Yeah. And yeah. live, it, it was something special live. It really was. Oh, I know. I mean, good Lord. Well, in the end, we shared pancreas cancer. You sure did. And, yeah, and and I saw him the night before he went to back to Italy. Oh wow! He asked me to ask me to come over and talk to him. Yeah. So I went. You know, he lived near me. I lived on a sixty uh, six, mm-hmm. and he lived on Thunder Park South. And I was there a couple of hours. Mainly, we were talking about you know, pancreas cancer and vaccines and stuff like that. And it ended up that I went to the place where he was going to go called Johns Hopkins in in Baltimore. Right. That's where I went to get a trial vaccine. Mm-hmm. And at that night, that the last night I saw him, we said, whoever gets there first needs to tell the other person what it's like, et cetera. Yeah. And I finally got there mm-hmm. and emailed him a long email telling him what it was all about. And, but I never heard back from him because he was dying by then. Uh, and you've been in mission. No, I, I, I was really sad when he died I, I, yeah. because that kind of sound, uh, I knew I'd never hear again. I think that, you know, I love the, when, you know, when you're talking about Pavarotti, um, because I think so many people around the world have all these amazing memories of him or what the, what his sound meant to their families or their lives or something like that. I just, you know, he was the one singer, classical singer that my dad listened to before I ever even opened my mouth and said, Hey, I think I want to be an opera singer. And, and he, the three tenors concert is what my parents took me to in Florida so that I could see what that actually meant. I didn't know what an opera singer was. So you know, Pavarotti, I mean, at least for, um, that, you know, with my dad and I, it was a lot of wonderful memories of sounds of listening to him and listening to those recordings. And, um, and I oh, feel, please, uh, you know, that, that, those, the, that sound, please, that sound was just unbelievable. And I can tell you that in my entire life, okay, mm-hmm. I remember two voices coming to my ear as if they were whispering in my ear. They, their, their sound traveled that way. And one was Joan mm-hmm. and one was Luciano. Absolutely. Two icons. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's, that's, that's right. So. I, but you, okay, can we, can I just like toot your horn for a second though too? Was because there's something so incredibly special about you what I loved was that I knew who I was listening to this amazing musician who used a voice from the top to the bottom. And I just, I mean, there's so much to say, Marilyn, just about the musicality and the voice and so much for a young singer to look up to and, and listen and study and watch. And it was a joy of my life to know you. And, um, and the best, I mean, one of the best things was getting to put on your costume one time. Ah! And I called you or texted you or what a message you, how are we were communicating at the point? And you were like, didn't they have to lower that like five inches? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's Carrie, isn't it? All right. But yeah. I, you know, but anyway, I mean, it was, yeah, I think to me, you, you are those memories to me, you, like Pavarotti was to my dad. So mm-hmm. it was, um, yeah. And I loved that because as I grew into the business, everybody kind of wanted more of a, of a vanilla sound where everybody sounded the same. And I remember you always saying, no, you be you because you, I want to know, can I pick you out of a lineup if I'm blindfolded? And yeah. that always just stuck with me. And I knew your voice wherever I was, I didn't have to see you. I just knew it was you. I yeah. can't tell you how much good that does me since I'm sitting here on my ass and not, <laughs> you know, not doing anything. and basically alone with caregivers right. because of the pandemic and uh i'm i'm high risk because i have diabetes and uh and my age of course and uh it does does my old heart good to hear things like that thank you very much well wow. no, you meant the world to me i yeah i don't know well, if I also that. i know who i'm hearing it from yeah i'm not hearing it 
some people who don't know what the hell it's all about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would love to know, Marilyn, if you had to choose, let's say, three top moments in mm -hmm. your career. Good question. Could it's you? Brain. You, know, you know why? Yeah. Because some top moments could have come in Minot, North Dakota. Whoa! There's nothing wrong with that. Something, something, something that l would leave a, a major memory with me, right? Yeah. Right. It could have, it could have happened in Podunk, Iowa. You know, mm -hmm. because I had so many, I sang so many recitals and orchestra concerts that I, I, I have lots of memories. But do you know, at this point and at my age, I, there, I just maybe a strange moment will bring something back to me but basically yeah. they're all in my head somewhere somewhere but i i, I can't conjure them up I, although when i said my not north dakota i'm talking mm -hmm. about a special memory from there mm -hmm. because um first of all marty and i had been on tour for like three weeks we were tired mm -hmm. we were on our way into why not and the plane got struck by lightning and oh god, um, oh my god. <laughs> you know one of, just one of those and uh, mine out was i'm sure it's the same you could down the drive down the, the main drag and there's mcdonald's on the left and burger king on the right and you know ramada inn and holiday inn and it, it's just you know one long sort of stretch like that okay yeah. all already tired but yeah you know, doing the recital. And I came out on stage and there were like three or four rows of children in the front. I love it. So that immediately almost gave me a heart attack <laughs> because I said, these kids will never sit still. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's gonna just drive me nuts the whole concert. Well, I had forgotten that they had a special School there, I was a Catholic school, I believe, because the father so and so had gotten in touch with me many months before to teach his kids the repertory that I was going to sing. So oh. they came backstage afterwards and they were asking questions like, you know, that Hugo Wolf song where you and stuff like that. It was amazing. The entire first three rows came back and talked to me. And that was already wonderful. Okay. After that, a young man was pushed up to me. This was all the same night in a wheelchair who obviously had some kind of palsy where he couldn't control his movements. Mm -hmm. And he was trying to say something to me. And I grabbed his hand and steadied him. And he said, ah, 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 I love you and oh. that, that, that did it for the evening wow, yeah. <laughs> but 10 years later i saw this wheelchair coming backstage at the met <gasps> and it was the same young man pushing wow. the same young man and oh. he was there at the met for his dream he was there for semiramides oh my god wow those are those are the kinds of things i remember sure so, but I do remember one night when I was singing a, um, a song, it's by, let me think, oh, come on, British composer, Holst, I think, maybe, Gustav Holst. It's, um, it's very re religious word, you know, like speaking to God, saying, by thee the things are done, and this and that, and I go, oh, damn, I can't think of the song. <laughs> but anyway, we'll look it I, up. Felt that it, I felt I connected with something else that night. Oh, wow. Well, I, and, but it's interesting that that never happened to me unless it was some kind of a religious connotation. So that had obviously something to do with me. And right. uh, I'm, not, I'm not a particularly religious person, mm -hmm. but I have a background of, you know, being raised going to Sunday school and singing in right. church, you know, yeah. being a paid soloist by age 15 and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but um, always, if, if I were singing something religious, I would 
get a, a better feeling. I could could be just where where my mind went. Yeah, you know sure. that to inspire me to sing those words. I don't know, but the things that I remember are that. Now, if you ask me, do I remember some big successes? Yes, I remember absolutely my debut at the Met. Come on, it was just like a dream. Right. Yeah. And, uh, you know, was, I was singing with Joan and we were doing Norma. And cool. uh, and when I came out for my solo bow, I had a standing ovation and <gasps> oh. stuff like that. Sure. I, you know, that's a, a big deal for an American. Right. Because the Met is what our dream. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember things like that. I remember particular successes at La Scala and places mm-hmm. like that. If I put my mind to it and see something, a book or something that can remind me of places, other memories will come back. By the way, there's a wonderful book that has just come out now uh, on Ricky Bonning's collection. He was a tremendous collector. Oh, and they did, oh they did, they just this? did this big, big book on, I'm going to say some of his things, Mm-hmm. from the house in Switzerland where he still lives. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it, it was put out in uh, honor of his 90th birthday oh. and all the proceeds go to their foundation, et cetera, et cetera. Oh, but yeah. I did the foreword for it. Oh, nice. And oh. So they set, set me the book and it's really wonderful. Good God, the pictures in there are incredible. There are wonderful pictures and it's, it's, it's huge. It's thick and it's, heavy wow but yeah. there's a lot in there but it, it's it's really quite wonderful yeah i just went to chicago to visit my mom who's going to be 83 right after your birthday and carrie's birthday and she wanted me to tell you the one time that she met you still sticks in her mind and she wanted me to say that she's sure you don't remember her but she remembers you and you changed her life so thank you for that where where, where was it in chicago no, it was in New York when I did the National Council auditions. And oh, that were, night? That, okay, that afternoon? Yeah. Okay. You were very okay. kind to her, and she loved that you were so down to earth. Well, nothing's changed. <laughs> you got that right. <laughs> hey. Well, live. you know, the, 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 in, in a way, the foundation is still going. Yes. In, in the... the thing is still at Carnegie Hall right because um it, it's it's run by Renee now and it, I'm sure it's the way she wants to do it I haven't been back since since I moved to California but um it's still I think pretty successful although Carnegie Hall is shut down of course. I know yes no I, everything I loved um, I loved being a part of that foundation. I loved going into the schools. It was all different ages schools, you know, from kindergarten to through twelfth grade. Oh yes, yeah. And then um, and the fa- the looks on their faces. And I have to say, not one school um, did I ever feel like the kids weren't into what I was talking about or what I was singing about. Um, and that some of them had never heard anything like that in their lives. And the questions that they had and it was such a brilliant idea to do that across the United States. And it also gave singers like myself, young singers, an opportunity to hone a craft of a recital because you were able to do it all over the country. It was amazing. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry it's no longer going, but uh, I know that if you can reach one child or teenager or whatever, one in the night, then you did something. You did something right. You are so right. Yeah. You know, and yeah. we should we should let you go, Marilyn, because we've we've had you for over an hour, and that's fine. I don't have anything else to do. <laughs> Nor do we. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, let me say this though, because when we interview people, we always have this um, section called rapid fire, kind of like you know James Lipton at the end of the Inside the Actor Studio, where he asks the same questions. So can, are we allowed to ask you some crazy rapid fire questions? Oh, well, that's fun. Okay. okay, cool. Are you, are you, okay. So yeah, I I'm want in my com- comfortable chair. Oh, yay! <laughs> well, then we're going to ask you some funny questions. Do you have a favorite wardrobe malfunction memory in opera? 
Oh, I think I have a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> we all do. One of my favorites was, are you ready for this, girls? I yes. was singing Simone Bocanegra. All right. you, I'm sorry, you and sang Bocanegra? I sure did. Many performances in Gelsenkirchen. And um, the, um, my dresser just got sewed on to me like a, a train that started from my shoulders and mm -hmm. went down the back. Yeah. Right? You, you, you sort of get the picture. Yes. And, and um, first of all, they opened the curtain too soon. So I didn't know it was open. So as far as I know, I was scratching in my behind. I didn't know what I was doing, but the, the curtain was open. And suddenly I said, is that curtain open? <laughs> okay. And just before that, I had had that new train, right? I went to the bathroom and flushed it down the toilet, and it was stuck, and they had to cut it off me <laughs> because the, because the or the the my aria had the introduction had started. Okay, oh my <laughs> and God. you know that aria. <laughs> yeah, it's a horrible aria. Yeah, it's, it, it's a so terrible simple, aria. It's horrible. You know, I heard somebody singing it the other night. Who was it? Oh, I know who it was. Michelle Bradley. Oh, cool. Oh, well, there you go. Oh, and it was a gorgeous recital. Oh, oh I bet. God, she's great. I bet. Great. She was singing that aria the other night, and I was thinking, God, that aria is so damn stupid. It is. It, it, it's really, and I never know if anybody gets the tempo right. No. Do you know, do um, you know, Marilyn, that I was. I thought her tempo was a little fast. Oh, really? Yeah, but. I don't remember what good old, you know, Verdi wrote, what kind of a temple he wanted. Okay. Do you remember that that was the aria when I came to your apartment and said, um, I really think that I need to move up to soprano. And you said, what did you bring me? And I said, I brought you the Bocanegra aria. And you're like, I want to hear that. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And so I sang it and you said, is that easy for you? And I said, yeah, I don't, it doesn't bother me. It kind of sits right in the cracks. And you're like, what? Yep. You're a soprano. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hateful aria. It really is. We're not talking about what we're all getting close to. We can't talk about that on this interview, Marilyn. <laughs> well, you and Carrie, we haven't told the world that you and Carrie share the same birthday. That's right. Happy birthday. Isn't that, isn't that amazing? And you yeah. know who else? Who? Uncle Merman. Yes. yes. Things are swell. <laughs> Things are great. Okay. I want to know. Bye. <laughs> I want to know the favorite place or favorite opera house that you've ever sung in. Mm, that's hard, tough, too. Tough one. I asked the tough questions, I guess. <laughs> I certainly... You know, maybe for the wrong, maybe for the wrong reason. I I think when I sang, finally, finally sang at the Colón in Argentina. Cool. Um, did either of you sing there? No, I had a contract and it, it got canceled because they had no money. Well, you know, they they were always running out of money and everything. I in fact, I came a year late because I had to have surgery. Mm -hmm. knee surgery and so uh, i was late come, coming but i walked out and when you walked out you, you were right in the center of the stage so and, and, I, and i hadn't been there to rehearse so i didn't know that was going to happen and i walked out and the audience erupted and they w wouldn't stop applauding it was just incredible and afterwards i remember asking him you know why why was that greeting so incredible and, and somebody said we've been waiting for you for years wow that was nice <laughs> okay so we'll put teatro cologne down yeah i also like liked very much singing in um venice at the uh, fenice nice. uh -huh. very okay. different one one seats 500 i mean i mean the fenice seats about 900 i think uh -huh. wow the, Cologne seats about five thousand. <laughs> oh, big difference! Big difference. Um, yeah, but you know, I've been back to the Fenice since. It, remember, it burned. Yes. And I've been back since it was redone, 
and the acoustics are better now. Oh, cool. You know, it, oh. The Venetia was always a tiny bit dead. Mm. Yes. You could, you could sense it on the stage even, but they did, did something. I don't know what it was, but the acoustics are better now. Yay. Um, favorite cuss word, any language? Oh, it's probably fuck. <laughs> <laughs> There you go, friends. Marilyn Horn. Yes. Um, do we want to ask the last question, Carrie? If heaven exists, what do you want to hear God say as you walk through the pearly gates? Marilyn, I want you to meet Joaquino Rossini. <laughs> yes! Beautiful. It's hard to pick him over Bach, but I did anyway. Right? I know. I, you know what? I'm, I'm glad you picked who you picked, but I totally understand that decision. Thank you so much and for doing this. And Verdi and Beethoven and, you know. I know. Donizetti, <laughs> Bellini. I mean, yeah, right. keep going, right? So. Well, how about Mozart? <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. Right? I know. Yeah. Yeah, Mozart's we not so on my top we list. Were, we were so lucky to be able to live with these guys. Absolutely. Yeah. So, so, so lucky. And I, I hope it does. I send die. you both my love. Thank and you. Have a Merry Christmas. You too. And, we're... and just pray that we get to see each other before I bite the dust. Oh, well, you know what, Marilyn, we're going to, we're going to plan, Carrie and I, we're going to plan a trip out there to California to do a concert. I would love nothing better than that. Yes. I, I want to sit on your porch and I know you're not a big drinker, but I am. And uh, you can have your pot and I'll have my alcohol and we'll have a really great time. <laughs> I don't smoke pot. No, I just... take LSD in oil, dear. I couldn't I never, never smoke anything. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can a pot brownie. <laughs> yeah, we can anyway, give you Anyway, I'll, I'll treat you like royalty if you come. I love lots it. Of, lots of great love to you. And again, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bye-bye. Same to you. Bye. Bye. Oh, really? Well, I wear hearing aids and I can still hear flat singing. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs>